The Monsters, a macabre sitcom featuring a family of harmless monsters, is one of the most beloved TV series of the 1960s. Originally running only two seasons from September 1964 to May of 1966, this Halloween-themed satire of suburban life actually outperformed its more famous counterpart series, The Addams Family. But a lot went on behind the scenes of this seemingly innocent show. Prima donnas, crippling budget concerns, and a tortured wedding engagement that made a cast member leave the show. Join us today as we explore the hidden history of the Munsters on this episode of Rerun Zone. The original idea for the Munsters came to Universal Studios many years before it aired when animator Bob Clampett tried developing it as a cartoon series between 1943 and 1945. It wasn't until 1963 that it actually got the green light. The new version was proposed by the writers of Rocky and Bullwinkle with the actual pilot called Love Thy Monster. Even then, executives argued over whether to make it an animated or a live action series. In order to pitch the show to CBS and its affiliates, a 16 minute presentation film was made in full color. Although Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis were in the original pilot, actress Joan Marshall played the part of Herman's wife, whose name was Phoebe instead of Lily. Bill Moomy was the producer's first choice to play Eddie Munster, but Bill's parents didn't like the use of extensive makeup that his character would have to wear. Nate Derman instead played the part of Eddie Munster, but he played the part as a real nasty brat. When it came time to film the series, they decided to replace Joan Marshall, as she looked too much like Morticia Adams. Yvonne DiCarlo was then cast as the matriarch of the family and renamed Lily Munster. Derman was also dropped and replaced by Butch Patrick. It's not widely known, but some of the scenes of the pilot episode were actually filmed on the same set used for the film Psycho. Speaking of sets, the exterior house used for filming actually appeared in other projects before the Munsters, including the famous series Leave it to Beaver, which had the same producers, Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher. Another detail often misunderstood by audiences was the belief that Herman and Lily Munster were the first TV couple to share a bed. However, this honor actually belongs to the real life couple, Mary Kay and John Stearns, on their 1940s show, Mary Kay and Johnny. Curiously enough, the black and white filming of the show was less an homage to the old Universal Studios horror movies and more to just avoid the additional $10,000 cost per episode to film the show in color. Budget constraints weren't the only difficulties plaguing the early episodes. DiCarlo, who was accustomed to Hollywood fame, often stayed in her dressing room as long as she wanted during filming, forcing the other actors to wait for her to emerge. She did become more cooperative later after Gwyn and Lewis made it clear they wouldn't tolerate her behavior for long. Ironically, given that DiCarlo acted as the least mature actor of the group, she was actually the oldest, at one year older than even grandpa actor Al Lewis. Gwyn had perhaps the most physically demanding challenges of the actors given his costume. His original attempt at doing all of his own stunts led to an incident where his headpiece was shattered. Also, the large foam rubber pads he wore as part of the Herman costume required the actor to drink large amounts of lemonade on set to avoid dehydration. Even still, Gwyn lost a considerable amount of weight while filming. But of all the troubles suffered by Munster's actors, the greatest was by Marilyn actress Beverly Owen. Engaged prior to filming, Owen only agreed to be on the show because she thought it would be a flop at which time she would return to her fiancé who lived in New York. But when the show instead became an instant hit, Owen was contractually obligated to stay in California while they filmed. She would often cry on the set from the pain of the separation, and it took the rest of the cast asking the executives to release her from her contract for Owen to leave. Ultimately, her marriage ended in divorce some eight years later, and Owen would never appear on screen again after her 13 episodes as Marilyn Munster. Owen's replacement, Pat Priest, looked so similar that most viewers never even noticed that the role was recast. Priest stayed with the show until the end of its second season and cancellation. 
Butch Patrick, who played the part of Eddie Munster, has said in an interview that he believes the reason for their dip in ratings was due to the Batman series, which had exploded in early 1966 onto TVs across America. Considering that both the Munsters and the Adams family were canceled that same year, it's certainly possible. But even before that, the cast had taken issue with the direction of the show. Gwyn and Lewis in particular thought the humor was too obvious during season two and would have been better with a subtler touch. Despite their misgivings about the show's final direction and its cancellation, most of the cast returned to reprise their roles in Monster Go Home, which was a 1966 film directed by Earl Bellamy, who also directed several of the episodes. One change, however, was the replacement of Marilyn actress Pat Priest by Debbie Watson. Priest later confessed in the A&E documentary series produced for the show that her removal had devastated the actress. However, the film does stand out as a rare opportunity for fans to see the monsters in color during the 60s. Ultimately, while the series only lasted for two years, it did run for 70 episodes and saw the release of four more films, with the 1973 Mini Monsters finally realizing an animated version of the series. The original cast of Gwyn, Lewis, and DiCarlo reprised their roles in the film The Monster's Revenge in 1981. It continues to endear itself in the hearts of many filmmakers. In fact, a reboot series, The Monsters Today, ran from 1988 to 1991 and lasted slightly longer than its predecessor at 72 episodes. Since then, three more attempts were made at reviving the 1960s classic, with the most recent being a Monsters big screen movie adaptation by Rob Zombie. Zombie, who is a huge fan of the original show, will be writing and directing the film. It will be the first time the Munsters family has been seen on screen since the Munsters Today ended in 1991. From all appearances, Zombie's vision of the show looks to be very respectful of the 60s sitcom. Although the Munsters only ran for two seasons, it is a pioneer in the genre of horror sitcoms. Ultimately, while it only lasted for 70 episodes, its legacy has endured and stands the test of time. What did you think of The Monsters? Do you think that it's strange that it's being rebooted as a feature film by Rob Zombie? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this kind of content, click on the link on the screen for more classic TV and movie trivia, reviews, and retrospectives on Rerun Zone. Goodbye for now.